Hey folks, Luxinda Swirl here. I'm going to paint some new Zuri molds. Hey. I have seahorses and regular horses. And this is called Lancet Windows. It's basically a, uh, meant to be a texture background. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. Hopefully. There we go. It's a very cool medieval sort of church windows and walls type of thing. And um, these are not from Zuri. <laughs> these are little corners and edgers. This is a fondant mold I got off of Amazon that I want to use to make um, some embellishments for the dragon box I'm putting together right now. So what I'm going to do is brush, make sure I'm refocused here. I want to brush mica colors in two of these, the horses and the seahorses and maybe a little um, a little bit of black in here and then I am going to color the epoxy resin gold. I'll mix that into the resin and pour it and we will do mold and see what we get. I'm going to use KS liquid stone um, because I'm just going to mix in the gold mica powder and pour. I'm not going to do anything that takes a long time that I would need the art resin for. And the liquid stone should still be somewhat pliable tomorrow because I will probably, like last time with the other Zuri molds, have to cut off the uh, excess flashing. Just because these molds are so shallow, I'm sure I will get some. So that's it. I'm just, I'm gonna fast forward. You can watch me brush in stuff, pour the resin. And as Steve McDonald would say, Bob's your uncle, Franny's your aunt. We will get our demolded pieces tomorrow, but in the blink of an eye for you. So, sit back and watch the show.
and we're back. So let's see how these turned out. I'm gonna start with these little, so our little, our little corners. Well, I wanted them to be a little golder so I can put some gold, I can put some, um, I can either rub some gold on them, I have the rub and buff gold, or I can paint on a little tacky glue, wait till it dries, and then um, paint on, or brush on um, some gold powder of some sort, either mica powder or chrome mica, something like that to make it a little golder looking and a little less, uh, little less see-through than it is there. I thought I mixed quite a lot of that sparkle powder in. Let me show you what that is. That's the, I was originally going to use the Pearl X gold mica that I got in an order recently, but then I decided to go with this super sparkle light gold mica powder from Crafter's Choice, and I put a whole mess of it in there. Uh, but clearly in a piece this tiny, it's still, um, didn't make it as gold as I had hoped. I needed something much finer than this. So I should have I should have gone with the original idea, but that's okay. I'll know for next time. All right. So this other one should look basically exactly the same. These are going to go on a box, I hope, for uh, embellishments. And here's another embellishment. I love. I used um, the liquid stone, the KS, uh, rather than the clear cast 7050 because I wanted these to be. Uh, bendy, one of my new scientific terms. I wanted it to be bendy when I took it out of the mold so that I could work with it. Whether it's by working with it, I mean cutting it apart to use just sections of it or molding it around something. I'm not entirely sure, but I certainly got a bendy piece here. And I did brush a little black on first. I was trying to go for kind of an aged look. Uh, I think it's maybe more of a dirty look, but <laughs> yeah. Let me put it on a. That's not bad. That's kind of pretty. Again, I may paint this and brush on some of the uh, gold mica powder I decided not to use. Um, next time I do anything like this and I want a gold piece, I will use a different colorant than this. Okay, still like it, looks nice. Now our, let's do our seahorses. These guys are so small, it was a little hard. Pretty, can you see all right? I keep assuming it's gonna autofocus, but you know, I, sh I shouldn't do that. I'll put these on white in a minute. Again, I had an an I anticipated the flashing, and honestly, if I put that on, say, a book cover or a box or something, and then paint it around it, I could probably I could probably camouflage the flashing without having to cut it all off first. But either way, I have to do something about it. These are connected. I'm not sure why. They connected these little guys to the bigger seahorses. Can take some of this flashing off now. That's a pretty, pretty little guy. Okay, and our bigger pieces. Go. Ooh. Again, flashing. Not unexpected. But very pretty. I like that blue mica. Those were the chromes. That's why they look so nice. Very, very pretty. So let's see how our horsies turned out. Oh, pretty. Got that, beautiful. Yeah, I'll have to take a knife to this one to get the flashing out. 
or off. That is gorgeous. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> In this case, I was going for something a little different than what I got. I think if I made the horse black it would with a silver mane, it would have been much, 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 much prettier, more striking, certainly. Uh, again, I was thinking this gold would turn out a little differently than it did, so that's a, totally my mistake. But I think that would look really pretty on a book cover, like a, a diary sort of thing, or a box. Very, very pretty. I love these molds. I really, really love them. I think they're gorgeous. All right, I'll set everything out, and then I'll bring the camera over. Okay, we're back. Uh, I decided to go ahead and I removed the flashing from all these pieces. I used this rub and buff. Um, I used the silver on the silver mane and the gold on the face. So the gold face head looked like this, very kind of see-through, and now it looks like this. And it was just a tiniest little bit out of here with a paper towel rubbed on. In fact, let me, let me demonstrate. I still have these pieces left that I can do this on. Just took a paper towel, nothing special. It says soft cloth, and I have those, but I figured since this is just a test, I'll try it out on a paper towel first. Just take a little bit. And basically, rub it on and then just sort of keep buffing it around and it will cover the entire space pretty well. It just takes a little bit. I would need a Q-tip probably to get it down in the circular spot there. But now we have, this is, this is just paper towel bits, I apologize coming apart there. Now we have a much prettier gold, burnished gold looking piece or aged gold looking piece compared to how it started. Makes a huge difference, doesn't it? All right, so here are my pieces rubbed with gold, rub and buff, and on this one, I do the silver rough and, rough and buff, yeah, rub and buff also. There we go. I have not done anything with this piece yet, and I don't know if I will. Or put a horse in the seat. That's why I keep saying put it on a book, put it on a box. That would look pretty. Or, it's not quite the right blue for the seahorses. White. There's another little guy. There we go. These Zuri molds with the chrome micas make such beautiful attachments to other embellishments, attachments to other things. Thanks so much, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.